Australia's geological record reveals several episodes of glaciation despite the continent's modern arid climate. Over hundreds of millions of years, Australia has experienced glaciations during different geological periods, from a major ice age in a late Paleozoic to minor alpine glaciations in the Pleistocene. This video discusses the timing and extent of these glaciations, the locations and landforms associated with past Australian glaciers, and the paleogeographic context of the continent during these icy episodes. The Late Paleozoic Glaciation One of the most significant glaciations in Australia's history occurred in the Late Paleozoic, during the Late Carboniferous and Permian periods 300 to 260 million years ago. At this time, Australia was joined with Antarctica, Africa, India and South America as part of the southern supercontinent Gondwana, which drifted over the South Pole. A major ice age gripped Gondwana, producing extensive ice sheets and alpine glaciers across what is now Australia. Glacial deposits from this permo-carboniferous ice age are found in every Australian state, indicating that large portions of the continent experience glaciation. At glacial maxima, ice caps and ice sheets spread over highland centres and even reach marine basins, carving icebergs into seas at Gondwana's margins. The evidence for this extensive glaciation is preserved in thick sedimentary sequences, sometimes kilometre-thick successions of tillites, glacial marine mudstones, and associated sediments. For example, basal Permian tillite layers, glacial diamictites, occur at the base of Permian strata across Australia, in the Sydney Basin in New South Wales, the Bowen and Galilee Basins in Queensland, the Perth and Carnarvon Basins in Western Australia, the Akaringa Basin in South Australia, Tasmania, the Werribee Gorge in Victoria, and elsewhere. In the Werribee Gorge, Permian tillites contain a jumble of rock types, like quartzite, granite, and slate, in a fine matrix, reflecting glacial transport of debris over long distances. A tillite is a hard, consolidated rock formed from glacial till, an unsorted mix of clay, sand, gravel, and boulders deposited directly by a glacier. Such deposits formed as glaciers ground up the bedrock and, upon melting, dumped unsorted sediment. In some localities, like the Wynyard Formation in Tasmania and Backers Marsh in Victoria, these tillites include dropstones, isolated boulders dropped into fine marine sediments from melting icebergs, indicating tidewater glaciers reach the sea. Glacial striations and polish on bedrock surfaces provide further evidence of ice movement. At Hallett Cove in South Australia, a famous 270 million year old glacial pavement with grooves and crescentic gouges marks the passage of an ice sheet moving northwest across South Australia. This suggests that an ice cap centred in what is now Antarctica extended into Australian regions, scouring the landscape. Erosional features like U-shaped valleys would have formed in upland areas, though many have been obscured by ensuing erosion and sedimentation. Throughout the Permian glaciation, the extent of ice fluctuated. Stratigraphic studies indicate multiple glacial interglacial cycles within the Lake Carboniferous to Permian interval. The early Permian saw the peak of ice cover in Australia, sometimes termed the P1 glaciation, when ice sheets covered large areas, including a massive ice sheet in what is now Western Australia. Later in the Permian, glaciation became more restricted to alpine and valley glaciers, persisting in Eastern Australia until about 255 million years ago. The glacial deposits record this retreat. For instance, in Queensland's Galilee Basin, the Ulambi conglomerate represents glacial advance into a lake Whereas in Victoria, the Backers Marsh Formation represents marine sedimentation as ice sheets retreated southward. Likewise in Tasmania, marine fossil-rich layers, like the Darlington Limestone at Maria Island, contain dropstones and cold-water marine faunas, recording waning ice and occasional icebergs still delivering erratics. By the end of the Permian, global climates warmed and Gondwana's ice age ended. Australia, moving northward, entered a long spell with no significant glaciation for over 250 million years. The Pleistocene Glaciations in Australia The Pleistocene Epoch, approximately 2.6 million years ago to 11,700 years ago, was characterised by repeated glacial interglacial cycles worldwide. In Australia, Pleistocene glaciation was limited to high elevations in the southeast of the continent and in Tasmania, due to Australia's relatively low latitude and arid climate during glacial periods. Small alpine glaciers formed in the Australian Alps and Tasmania multiple times, Notably, mainland Australia's only Pleistocene glaciers, which were in the vicinity of Mount Kosciuszko in the snowy mountains of New South Wales, 
which is the highest part of the Great Dividing Range. In contrast, the island of Tasmania, at higher southern latitude with more relief, saw more extensive glaciation, including ice caps on the central plateau and valley glaciers in the western mountains. However, even at their maximum, these glaciers were tiny compared to those of the northern hemisphere. Geological evidence indicates that early Pleistocene glaciations in Australia were the most extensive. During an early glacial phase, about 7,000 square kilometres of Australia was glaciated, mostly in Tasmania and a small portion on the mainland with a network of ice caps and valley glaciers. This likely corresponds to a Pliocene or early Pleistocene cold stage where conditions were cool and moist enough to sustain relatively large ice cover in Tasmania. In subsequent glacial cycles, the extent shrank. Middle Pleistocene glaciations covered on the order of 4,000 to 5,000 square kilometres. By the last glacial maximum, 20,000 years ago in the late Pleistocene, Australian glaciers were at their smallest, totaling only 1,085 square kilometres of ice cover. Most of this last glacial maximum ice was an ice cap on Tasmania's central plateau, with outlet glaciers flowing down surrounding valleys, while mainland Australia's glaciers covered a mere 100 square kilometres or less around Mount Kosciuszko. The alpine glacial landforms from the Pleistocene are well preserved in certain areas. In Kosciuszko National Park, you can still see cirques, which are bowl-shaped hollows high in the mountains where glaciers once formed. These icy basins now hold small lakes called tarns, and nearby moraines, which are rocky ridges, mark how far the glaciers once stretched before melting away. For example, Blue Lake and the neighbouring lakes, Lake Albina and Lake Kutapatamba, occupy glacial cirques on the Kosciuszko Massif and are dammed by terminal moraines of Pleistocene age. The Blue Lake Cirque contains the best developed glacial features on mainland Australia, including a pronounced glacial valley and moraine ridges. These features record a small ice cap and outlet glaciers that existed on the Kosciuszko Range during the last glacial. Similarly, Tasmania's highlands exhibit classic alpine glacial geomorphology. U-shaped ridges, such as those around Cradle Mountain and Lake St. Clair, knife-edged ridges, cirques and moraine dam lakes. In the central Tasmanian plateau, Pleistocene ice left extensive moraines and scoured bedrock knobs. One clear example is the loose, jumbled mix of rocks left behind by melting glaciers in Tasmania's valleys. You can also see signs of cold climate activity nearby, like fields of broken rock scattered across the ground, called block fields, and slow-moving soil flows that form rounded ridges on slopes, known as solifluction lobes, indicate the region was a periglacial environment beyond the ice limits. The timing of the last glacial events in Australia is well constrained by radiometric dating. The maximal ice advance in Tasmania and the Snowy Mountains occurred roughly 20,000 to 18,000 years ago, with final glacial re-advances in some areas 17 to 16,000 years ago before rapid deglaciation. By 14,000 years ago, all small glaciers in Tasmania had melted, leaving behind only the geological traces in the landscape. Unlike in North America or Europe, Australia's Pleistocene glaciers never approached continental scales. They were localised in the highest mountains and were only tens to a few hundred metres thick. From ancient supercontinents blanketed in ice to isolated alpine glaciers clinging to mountain peaks, Australia's glacial history is a remarkable story written into the rocks. While the continent may not boast the massive ice sheets seen in North America or Europe, it holds some of the oldest and most diverse glacial records on Earth. The Permo-Carboniferous Ice Age left a continental footprint. Tillites, striated pavements, and dropstones stretching from Tasmania to Queensland. And though the Pleistocene glaciers were small and short-lived, they sculpted striking landscapes still visible today in the Snowy Mountains and Tasmanian highlands. These features remind us that even in a land now dominated by deserts and dry plains, ice once shaped the terrain, and its legacy endures in every glacial groove, scattered boulder, and alpine cirque. Australia's icy past may be hidden beneath layers of time, but for those who know where to look, the fingerprints of ancient glaciers are carved deep into the continent's geological story. I hope you found this as interesting as I did, and as always, thanks for watching. Before I end this video, I'd like to give a big shout out to my Patreon and YouTube members. Thank you so much to everyone that helps to support this channel.